Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 6 of the chapter Organic Compounds, Some Basic Principles and Techniques. In the previous two videos, we had been discussing the structural representation of organic compounds. And in the last two videos, I told you, the, I explained the various ways how we can express the structure of an organic compound in two dimensions. In this video, we are going to discuss the 3D representation of organic compounds. Organic compounds are not present in, uh, in planes of paper. They are not flat molecules. They are molecules in three dimensions. And therefore, when we talk of the structure in two dimensions, all we understand is who is bound to whom and what is the pattern in the entire organic compound of the, uh, of the atoms and, of course, which, what kind of structure is it making. But we understand that only in two dimensions. The molecule appears flat to us. Yet, of course, that stru those structures do help us to understand the bonding and the properties that are dependent on the bonding, who is bound to whom. We can understand those simply by knowing the flat structures. On the other hand, there are some optical properties. There would be some properties which, are, which would be based on the three-dimensional arrangement, that is the spatial arrangement of these atoms in the molecule. And there are different ways how we can represent the uh, molecules spatially, that is their arrangement spatially too. So that is known as the 3D representation of organic compounds. The first method is, now again, these 3D representations may have models, structural models, which you could make out of plastic, you could made out, make them out of uh, uh, thermocol balls and sticks like toothpicks, or you could use plastic structures, you could use metallic balls or metallic rods in order to make these structures. We usually use the balls and rods. The balls would represent the atoms and rods or toothpicks or uh, a plastic, uh, uh, what, um, a tube that would act as a, like a straw, that would act as uh, the bonds. So basically we have two structures, spheres, that is balls, and sticks. The sticks representing the bonds and the balls representing the atoms. So anyway, he, these are also represented on paper. And there are ways how we represent these three-dimensional structures on paper. So the first way how we represent three-dimensionally the molecule is known as the solid and dashed wedge formula. They are the formula, for example, we are going to talk of methane in all these cases. We are going to take the simplest example, methane, the simplest hydrocarbon. So methane, how would you represent it on two dimensions showing its three dimensions? You want to show that the structure is not on a flat piece of paper, it's not on the board. So how would I show it? So it was decided that we'd make wedges and wedges, a wedge is this shape. So you have wedged sandals on which <laughs> it's very uh, vain of me to uh, give that example. But yes, wedged sandals you've all seen and you know what wedged, if not you, if you're boys, you must have seen your moms wearing them. So the wedged heels, that is the shape of a wedge. It's tapered and it goes wider on the other. So these wedges were made and two types of wedges were created. One was a solid wedge that is solid dark colored and the other was a wedge that was dashed. You used dashes to make the shape of a wedge. Now uh, when you see an airplane on the aerodrome or a car very close to you, as the car moves away from you or as the aeroplane takes off from the land and moves up to the sky, what happens to the size of it? It grows smaller and smaller as it is going away from you. And it gets bigger and bigger if the plane is landing or if a car is approaching you. You're seeing it from a distance, it appears to be small. As it comes closer to you, it appears to be big. That was the idea of using a wedge. The wider end of the wedge shows that that's, that uh, bond or that atom is closer to you. And the tapered end, the sharper end, that is the end which is moving away from you, right? Now, when it is solid, when something is close to you, it is clear to you. But when something is moving away, the vision becomes blurred. So using that concept, we made the wedge with dashes. 
the wedge with dashes shows that it's not so clear to you it means it is further away from your eyes and therefore it is it's not that clear to you so what we did and a straight line of course is a bond which is in the plane of the paper so we'll show the molecule in such a way that there is a bond in the plane of the paper so for example methane was shown with the help of wedge and dash formula where we showed carbon in the plane Hydrogen and this hydrogen, these two hydrogens have been shown with two single lines, which means that they are in the plane, in the board. Now the formula, the wedge, the dashed wedge is the one that is going away from you, which means that this bond is moving, this hydrogen is bond, bonded in such a way that it is moving away from you. If this is the board, then how would it be moving away from you? It means it is going behind the board. So that is what we have shown. The wider end of the wedge is towards you, towards the carbon. It means carbon is here and the hydrogen is slowly, it gets smaller and smaller and it gets blurred and blurred, which means it is moving away from you. And this wedge on the other hand, the solid wedge, has the smaller end towards carbon. It means carbon is here in the plane and this hydrogen, it, where it is, it is the wider end. It means it is towards you. So this hydrogen is coming out of the plane of the board. So the solid wedge is coming, is a bond which is projecting towards you. The dashed wedge is a bond that is moving away from you. And the carbon and the two hydrogens are in the plane of the paper. So just by using the wedge, which is whether it was solid or was it dashed, I can explain to you whether this bond is moving away from you or is it moving towards you. That was the idea of now you can get a three-dimensional picture in your mind. When you look at methane, you can tell that if this was the central part was carbon. So the, this was carbon, one hydrogen was in the plane, the second hydrogen was in the plane of the paper. Mm, let me first make the... Yeah. So this carbon is in the plane of the paper and these two bonds let us see they are in the plane of the paper do you see they are making one plane they are touching one plane so these are three atoms are in the plane of the paper so i make sim simple line sim uh, simple lines for these this would be a solid wedge which is coming towards you and this black one would be the dashed wedge moving away from you do you see this one is the dashed wedge which is moving away from you. This is the solid wedge which is coming towards you and these two are in the plane of the paper. So I have shown the tetrahedral shape with the help of just lines in two dimensions. Yet I gave you this image that the molecule is like this. It is not a flat molecule. It's a molecule where only two bonds are on a flat surface. One bond is moving out of it and one bond is moving behind it. And then if you have knowledge of the angles that all angles are equal, you will come to the symmetrical structure, which would be a tetrahedral structure. So this was the first way. Let me just read. Solid and dashed wedge formula it is made to perceive now this is not an actual 3d structure you can only perceive it simply because you know what it means only then you would be able to perceive it so it is made to perceive the three-dimensional image on a 2d surface i'm making this formula on a board yet you can you can perceive it you can see it you can imagine it in its in your mind's eye what the structure would be like a dash, a solid wedge is an object which is projecting towards the observer. A dashed wedge is an object which is projecting away from the observer. And the broad end of the wedge is towards the observer. And the sharp end of the wedge is away from the observer always. And the simple lines are bonds in the plane of the paper or the whiteboard as in this case. So this is the dashed wedge, which is moving away from the observer. So this hydrogen is moving away from the observer. And this is a solid wedge, which is moving towards the observer. Therefore, this hydrogen is coming out of the board towards you. And this hydrogen is moving away towards the behind the board. So the dashed wedge 
is away from the observer while the solid wedge moves towards the observer. So this was the first model that was in two dimensions, yet it gave you an idea you could perceive it, the molecule in three dimensions. The next molecular models, I'm not, these are molecular models. Molecular models were actually physical models. Yet we find a way to write them on the board also or write them in the paper also because we want to, we want to communicate the structure of the molecule to the reader also. The first is known as the framework model. The framework model is what I made for you, you know. It only shows the bonds, it does not show the atoms. If I had to show you the tetrahedral structure of uh, methane, I would simply hold these pens together or simple plastic tubes or metallic tubes or toothpicks together. I could paste them together and this would give you an idea. So what am I doing in this? Only the bonds are shown. It emphasizes on the patterns of the bonds. It does not show you the actual shape of the molecule. It only shows you that there is a carbon in the middle, these are the different bonds and it only tells you, it emphasizes on the shape of the bonds with the head, or shape of only the pattern of the bonds, not the shape of the molecule. And it does not take into consideration the size of the atoms. Some atoms may be larger, some may be smaller. All atoms of different elements, they have different uh, masses, they have different sizes. This does not take that into consideration. It's only giving you the skeleton of the molecule in a way. It's only giving you the skeletal system. This is the skeleton of the molecule and the body you can always, the body would be the atoms that you would add in the form of balls. But here in this structure, in the framework model, you only get the framework of the molecule. You do not get the uh, actual structure. The second is the ball and the stick model. Now the sticks, of course, are the same. That is the tubes or toothpicks or whatever you use or metallic uh, rods you may use. But these sticks, when you put balls, do you see these different colored balls? They are actually caps. But imagine that if on the tip I had balls to represent the atoms. If I had this in the center, I had this ball and the stick coming out of it and the tips were with balls. So the hydrogens would be shown by smaller balls and the carbon atom which is a larger ball would be shown in the center and the lines, the pens are representing the bonds. So the ball and the stick model. It, the balls show the atoms. This takes into consideration the difference in the size of the atoms. Carbon atom is larger, hydrogen atom is smaller. So it takes into consideration the size of the atoms and the molecule is made in such a way that you can see both the atoms and the bonds. You can see the skeletal system also and the ends at the ends of the skeletal system you have the balls representing the bonds. It is nothing but the same structure but with balls which show the different atoms. So ball and stick model both atoms and bonds are shown. Now, in reality, when you look at a molecule, the bond is only a, an, an attraction. It is a shared pair of electrons, so to say, but it is only an attraction. Two atoms are staying together. The electrons, if you imagine the quantum mechanical model, the electrons are not actually placed between the two atoms. They are vibrating. They are not fixed in position. So a bond is nothing but a force of attraction which is holding them together. So these sticks or uh, the bonds actually do not exist. It's only, so it's not necessary to show this, the bonds in a molecule. So the last model is more, a little more realistic if you say, it only shows you the atoms. It only shows you, it is known as the space filling model. If you would imagine this, you would say that you make this ball bigger and these balls bigger in such a way that the bonds are not visible. This unnecessary space between them is filled up by the atom. So the model that you would get would be somewhat like this. Um, if I hold these three balls like this, one ball here, and this is not actually the exact structure, but do you see three balls? here which should be a little scattered they should be a little away 
and then the red ball here which is the carbon here and one here hydrogen here so this is the space filling model you actually see only the atoms and the bonds are not shown in it you're only seeing the atoms but the bonds are not shown so you see the same molecule now in all directions if you can see it it would still be the same shape as i made it with the bonds if you look at it and rotate it i would encourage you to try this with little balls at your place you will see the same structure that you saw when you made only oh all the tt balls are going here and there when you see only the bonds isn't it basically the same structure now you are imagining only the balls the center was also a ball and these were all balls and it is actually the same structure but this was giving you the skeleton it was looking at the structure from inside what are the bonds attractions like and this gives you more or less the actual structure so how do you represent this on board we made the carbon as this bigger ball and the smaller atoms were shown as this but since it is in two dimensions we imagine we cannot see all the atoms clearly and since we cannot see all the atoms clearly we will show them as these half circles half moons or whatever just to show that there are these four balls right so this is known as the space filling model isn't it interesting so these are the various ways how we uh, express or three dimensionally represent the molecules and in two dimensions plus the models that we prepare in order to understand the the three dimensional structure of the molecule on which the properties of the molecule depend so with this i'll wrap up this video if you found it helpful give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now